and we are back on the airwaves broadcasting live from my living room and now you guys can refresh the stream as well and then we should be good to go now what else can I put here what about these they kind of look nice I like them personally I think they are very fitting for our car and then we can still get a grill to the front but actually I want to try if I can fit a lip fit a lip there they are there wait that's all I can't go any further seriously oh that looks weird I don't like the lip no lips for this one perhaps we are gonna put a little all oh, right we have these But they have exhausts. Let's try one without exhausts. I think this is exactly what we needed. Maybe a bit wider. No. I mean, it depends on the angle now it looks like they are blind the headlights but they're not they are fine uh, we of course need a badge I forgot the badge how could I forget the badge dun 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 where's the badge there's the badge turn it around move it up a bit bigger and there you go effect higher oh actually and we need a bonnie we definitely need a bonnie here to emphasize the sportiness of this one oh yes nice but then again, it has to be said, of course, with this type of body, it is very difficult to make a, an ugly car because the body is just so awesome that uh, there's not much bad you can do. And you go, you can always say, well, sorry, that was the design. Always works as an excuse. Now, we'll give it some door handles, something, something special as well. I think these are appropriate. bit bigger because I, th I hear Alain Prost actually has quite big hands even though he's not the tallest of guys as all the F F1 drivers in fact have been and are I think the tallest one one the mo one of the tallest was Mark Webber and Alexander Alexander Woods in fact was even even taller he was I think nearly one meter ninety which is huge for an F1 driver. I mean, the average of an F1 driver is kind of 170, 172. Um, for those Americans of you, sorry, 172. That is one meter and 72 centimeters. That is about five, what is it, five feet and 11, no, not 11, it's less. Perhaps five, five and five. And yeah, Hülkenberg, Hülkenberg is somewhat tall as well, but not exceptionally. I think he's he barely touches, yeah, like 185. That's that is a big. It's a really an issue. I mean, for the, for the F1 designers, the bigger the driver is, the more issues they have designing the car around him, because it is a weight thing, of course, also. If the driver is 
like 10 kilos heavier then that means the car will be slower by quite a lot and of course they cannot really have that anyhow um, we need tail lights and we need pretty tail lights and we need them now what about these they are probably too modern they are um, let's go with the round ones classic And the I mean, we we kind of do want the Le Mans feeling to be there in the car as well, um, because it is very difficult, especially in the 80s. It was very difficult to make any car look like an F1 car, because nobody would want to drive it because they would all be afraid to die in it. You know, the 80s were still kind of a wild time in the Formula One. Very dangerous, despite the first. Uh, monocoques they had that were made of uh, carbon fiber it was still a very dangerous business I think in 1982 the last driver was um, sadly losing his life on track he was um, what was his name I would have to look it up but it was I think 1982 in uh, the Grand Prix of Canada Okay, and these do not work by some reason. Let's put a second one that is smaller, not bigger. Try putting it in there. Oh, that works. That looks good. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I was speaking about the drivers that died in the 80s. Um, luckily, there were not that many anymore. I mean, the 70s and the 60s were a lot worse when it came to that. Uh, but in the 80s, sadly, we did lose. Well, we, we lost more, but um, on, the, on the racetrack, there was only this guy in 1982, and then there was, I think, a few drivers that died during uh, test drives. Uh, but I do not have all the names in my head right now. I'm too much focused on creating this beautiful car. And uh, we do need... Yeah, it does need a grill on the back. It definitely does. Uh, da -da -da. Maybe something very simple like this will do. And put a badge on it. Or perhaps don't put the badge on it, put the badge on top. It looks better. Um, I think it was 82 and yes of course Roland Ratzenberger died as well the same weekend on the same track and uh, if we are very unlucky then um, Charles Bianchi I do not know his current condition I think he was still in a life-threatening situation and that would have been or possibly, sadly, would be the next one to lose his life on a racetrack. Which so, which shows, I mean, Formula 1 is still a dangerous business these days, despite all the safety features that they have. It is still... Yeah, something can always happen. It's just uh, the way it is. Oh. Okay, um, they look different, these exhausts. Hmm. They look very different. Why do they look so different? Oh, Eddie Gaming 93, welcome. Would you add tanks to the game? 
Um, perhaps not, because tanks are usually produced by uh, companies that produce weapons, generally. So, no. Not really. I mean, it's not really the same type of business, you see. That's uh, one good reason, I guess. Simona did something. Died of head injuries. Oh, you mean the woman? Yes, right, right. Yeah, but the circumstances of her death are a bit mysterious. Um, there may have been some medical or medicational abuse. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to... I don't, don't really want to uh, speculate on this, um, but I, it was not really caused by her injury. Let's put it that way. Her injury was pretty much healed, except for her, her psyche. That was a different story. Um, okay. Also, exhausts look a bit weird when you put them here. Let's try these. Yeah, they look weird too. Even weirder. Hmm. Okay. What if I put them on the side? Here? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that looks better. Alright. <clears throat> Um, BMW... I cannot recall BMW making B12 tank engines, to be honest. Um, Rolls-Royce did, for sure. And as for Germany, um, there was a Maybach B12 engine, I believe, that was used. But BMW, no, not that I know. And uh, so far, Eddie Gaming, we have uh, V8 engines in the game. Uh, we do not have anything above that yet, because it is not something. Um, how to put this? I mean, you in, in usual in production cars, you have a four-cylinder or a six-cylinder engine. That is the majority of engines. And things like a V12 and a V10 are rather exotic. They are for super sports cars, and usually they are not built in big numbers, so therefore it did not make sense to... And yeah, I'm not the developer, I'm just speaking, I'm just trying to explain the reasoning. Um, so V10 and V12s I think are something that is planned for the game, um, but when it will come, we will see. We will see. For now we have i6, i4 and v8 and that allows you to make pretty much any kind of engine already. So, so we are good on that. Okay, now I have these exhausts on the side but now I have nothing in the middle. And that's a bit sad. What happens if I pull this here? It looks normal. Okay. It's good. Put it like this. But we need extra vents for the engine, clearly. Let's put something here. A bit in this direction. A bit bigger too. And then another vent on the side. Perhaps in chrome as well. Yeah, I think that would be good. All right. Better to have a lot of cooling because we're going to make the biggest engine possible to fit in there.
Yeah. All right. Now it does need a win. And uh, I have not managed to get the 80 wings to work. 80s wings, the one that came out just yesterday. <clears throat> I do not know why. I think there must be some issue with the with the packing program. So for now we are stuck with these. And I'm thinking we're just going to use this one. It was originally intended to be used with this chassis. So we are going to. But we're going to make it a bit smaller. Right. What does that change? The angle? Ah. Very small, very decent wing. Not too big. Alright. Yes, Perlix, it's that time of day. It is dark, it is raining, so the tanks are coming in question. Yet again. Okay, I think we're done here with the styling. Now we get to the interesting part, the engine. In line 6, we're gonna make it out of aluminium and I find out that this is definitely too big. Put a 75 here. Make it a 2.4 liter. I think that should be okay. Oops. Yeah, that looks good. RPM average, work average. Hmm. We we'll have to see. Maybe we'll, eventually we we'll have to switch. Give it a uh, wait. 89, 1987. It should be. Um, give it a dual overhead cam with the four valves per cylinder. Aluminium, of course. Put the compression to 9.5. No VVT, no VVL. Wait, no, not quality, I meant the color. The color matters. Blue! Blue it should be. Uh, naturally aspirated, not gonna fiddle with the turbo for now. Because I think it would also exceed the dimensions we have available. Uh, let's see, injection, injection? Mm, no. Carburetor, ECOE, twin or triple. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, premium, a rather rich fuel mixture. Definitely more refs. At least 6.8. But we have to see about reliability. And uh, I think tubular. So it kind of limits us. Ah, we'll see, we'll see. 19 horsepower. Hmm. Okay, let's see what we got here. Kind of a tank engine. Oh, it's gonna be a hundred. 17. That is... Oh, the bottom end part is reducing MTBF. Okay, so we do have reliability problems. Need to go into the test mode and see what part exactly is failing. Oh, 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 right. It is revving too high. We need to switch it up. The cranks. The. I beam. No, the con rods. Ah, I beam steel. And now. We should have no trouble. 
we still have trouble, but not as much. Right. Okay. Um, we have kind of given it more RPM than it can use. But we can also go much higher with the compression. 10.5. Okay, now we have some knocking that was clear. I would overdo. Okay, 177 horsepower. That is decent. I was aiming for something around 200. So, in order to achieve that, what can we do? We can increase the cam profile, but that will not do that much. Oh well, actually 184, not bad, but yeah, <coughs> you became the urge to model stuff again, like what, what are you gonna, wait, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do a hammer, are you? I personally think that the Hummer is one of the worst designed cars ever made. I mean, I understand its purpose and I think probably as a military vehicle it is rather awesome, but for a street car, whenever I see a Hummer on the roads, and I sometimes do see one or two, I think that I wouldn't even want it gifted, put it that way. I wouldn't. I would sell it for an insane amount of money. That's what I would do. Anyhow, let's uh, increase the ignition timing here. Or rather make it shorter because now we have knocking. Not what we wanted. What's oh, still knocking? Stop the knocking. Stop. 190 horsepower. Decent. Decent, decent. Exactly 190, okay. Lambo Hurricane Headlight? No. Don't drift away, Perlix. Stay with us. Stratovarius. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I see what you did there. Okay, now. Big question. Um, do I stick with the carburetor? Or do I go for a mechanical injection and go insane mode? Because what mechanical injection does in 1987 is gonna double the material cost. Pretty much. Let's try. Mechanical injection. And what does it do? Yep, it doubles the material cost. And it's knocking too. lower the compression a bit and it doesn't even give us a big power advantage so that was a bad decision most definitely and yes it has become more reliable but responsiveness actually has not improved not at all huh okay then let's see what a throttle per cylinder will do I mean, the price difference is not that great. But it does look impressive. All these... ...throttles. Per cylinder. This has increased responsiveness, of course. Um, and now we can perhaps even ref a bit higher. Let's hit the 7000. 193, okay. Um, ok, 
Okay, let's put more quality on the top end and bottom end. Oops. Oh, I'm not ready here. Okay, 194 horsepower. Of course, the car will be very lightweight, so that shouldn't be much of an issue. It's a decent engine, but it's not its not really that sporty. Let's see what a long tubular will do. Uh, it gives us 200 horsepower. Okay. That was worth it. Yeah, Leo, you're right. It's, since, since it's in honor of Alain Prost, then mechanical injection is appropriate. Definitely. Also, actually, we're using... No, we're using performance intake. Okay. That is okay. Um, now we can even... Increase the richness of the fuel mixture. Which is gonna put us above 200 horsepower, and now we can give it more compression again. 221. Okay. 202. Oh. Mystery of the ignition timing. When do you actually lose power with it? Now we do. And why is not really clear. And now it's knocking. Right. So we give more angle on the camshaft. And we see we have 201 horsepower. Let it rev a bit more. But we are already at the RPM limit. Let's give it 7.3. Look at that, we lost reliability, guys. But then again, it's a race engine. Well, not a race engine necessarily, but for sure a sport engine. So I guess uh, the reliability is just appropriate. Okay. And actually we can give two quality points on this as well. That gave us back some reliability. Oh, okay. 65. Yay! And not knocking. So the engine is responsive. It is not French, Leonardo. It is, in fact, a Belgian. We're gonna get it a 7.5. That's a compromise. I think we can all live with that. See, we're not gaining any more power. We have sacrificed some more reliability. That's pretty much all we did. Oh, but the engine is so smooth. Oh, so smooth. In fact, we can improve the quality of the exhaust as well. Right. That is good. I like it. The power curve looks a bit weird though. It's like... Like here it's even dropping. Kind of between two and four thousand. Kind of very weird. Sounds so good. Oh yeah. Do you hear that? Oh my god. 
that's beautiful. Alright, now. Okay, we're gonna do this consequently now. Uh, I'm gonna max the fuel mixture, at least the 13. Since we do have the mechanical injection, we should make a use of it. Uh, it gives us more power as expected. Reaching the RPM limit, that is fine. But now we have more space to play around with the ignition timing. Let's put it to 17. Uh, okay, that fucked us up pretty hard. Uh, 68. Wow. Okay. Why is it doing that? It shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Not better at all. Alright, enjoy your dinner, Leonardo, and uh, give a cuddle to your dog. From me. Please. Whatever her name is. And I wouldn't be surprised if her name was Ferrari. Just saying. I deem you capable of naming your dog Ferrari. Yes, I am. I do. Um, yeah, lower cam profile, perhaps. Yeah, that gives us a better power band in indeed. It also means we do not need that much uh, revs anymore. Ah. But we still have 7500, so we pretty much have 500 revs going to nowhere. Da -da -da. Um, of point A should be possible. Yes, it is. Good. 201 horsepower. Now, try ignition timing. Okay. That did not much at all. Oh, and knocking. Again at 5.5, five. damn, paid 5.5. Five. For some reason I have it in my head that I always want to reach the maximum torque at the lowest RPM possible. I don't know if I'm weird, but that's what I would try to achieve and this hurts my eyes. 4,900 was okay, but 5,500, that is much. They don't go nowhere, you say. Okay. But the power is dropping here at this point. It doesn't increase anymore. So... Hmm. Well, okay, anyway. Let's... Try and see... What it does in the car. Of course, it's going to be manual, of course, it's going to be 5 gear, of course, the top speed is going to be beyond 230. A uh, bit longer, to, um, um, yeah, stuff, thingy. Sports compound road. We do have rear wheel drive, so give it a 205 at least. 16 inch. Oh yeah, this is a driving machine. Oh yeah. Solid disc two pistons. Uh, give it a 60. 225. 65 in the back even. 225. 135 in the rear. Right. Make the under tray semi clad bit less airflow I guess no airflow to the brakes well this does almost nothing 
we do want a bit of downforce in the back. Well, I don't think we get anything in the front though. Anyway, um, two seats, premium interior, a bit less insulation, I think, because we do want to hear the engine. Then premium 80s interior, the entertainment. Okay, driving assists. I think we we're gonna give the car none, none at all because we want this to be a pure driving machine. I mean, after all, it's made for a guy that just won the Formula One World Championship, so he doesn't need any driving assists, that's for sure. I mean, he's, he's used to driving a turbo, a turbo with nearly a thousand horsepower. So who needs that? Give it standard safety and sport. Lower the right height, 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 height. Okay. Um, I like to see that we have tameness and sportiness nearly on the same level. It's surprisingly comfortable. Not sure why. Perhaps the premium interior helps with that. Safety, of course, is lacking, but that was to be expected. And we have uh, still a decent reliability, actually, even for a Belgium car. Belgium car? Belgian car, rather. Right, 5.3 seconds, 0 to 100, that is decent. I guess we can improve the, the wheel area in that. Um, top speed is good. Braking is excellent. Honoring is not so good. 0.96. Huh. No, that's not really good. But the roller angle is very good. Anyway, see what it does on the track. 242. Wait a second. 242, 44. That seems not very fast. At all. Oh. Mm hmm. You gonna sleep? All right. Felix, thank you for being here. It was a pleasure having you. And I hope you have a good night. And tomorrow is Friday. And that is good. So I'll see you around next time. Hopefully. And yeah, you have a good night, man. Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out how I can improve this. Da, 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 da. Well, it did improve. That's not the thing. That's not the problem. Oh, everything looks fine here. Engine is fine. Two hundred and two horsepower. Yeah. if I made the rear tires even bigger? 115. What does that do? Oh yeah. That worked out very nicely. They're not too big, but made the car sportier. And it did help with the cornering. Yes! Exactly what I wanted. Very good. Okay. Now, looking good. Acceleration has improved, 5.2 seconds. I think 5 seconds is decent, perhaps with a bit different 
spacing. This is gonna improve even further. Oh, not that way though. Maybe rather like this. I mean, 0 to 100 time matters a lot for these type of guys. 5.2 seconds. Uh, let's try to give it a plus 2 quality. Okay, that hasn't helped us at all. Oh, okay. Fine. Anyhow, uh, let's see. We have still, we actually still have James Banana, who has been silent throughout the evening, but I still appreciate you being here. The Mod Damager. Mod Damager. I have seen your name here before, good sir. I welcome you as well. And of course, Leo is eating dinner, but still on the stream. And Wizzy the Man is lurking in the background while working on something else, perhaps. Right, and we are now in the finishing stage of the Garneau. Well, it probably is not going to come as a surprise that the Garneau is going to call it Post. Maybe even Post F1, because that is a very fitting name. Wait, now that I'm actually scrolling, I'm zooming out and I see that I don't actually like the grill. Oh well, what do I do with that? I'm just not feeling it. Well then, let's see if we can find something better. Perhaps we can. Let's give it a chrome grill. Something small. -ish. Not that small. Yes. That looks better. Alright, I like this better. But this means we have now, I think, more air incoming. Yes, we do. But that has not damaged us in any way. It has, in fact, improved all the stats. So that is good. Has gone is going a second faster now. I think that is decent. I think we can conclude the building here. We're gonna call the engine, I mean, the, the car Garno Post Post F1. There we go. Have a last look. It is blue, it is very beautiful. It is a very dangerous driving and driving machine. 202 horsepower but not even a ton of weight that makes for a lot of fun. Could be better though. Um, perhaps we're gonna improve this next time when it is again time for Garno Automobile. Um, I thank you all for watching tonight, participating in chat. Uh, follow us here on Twitch if you haven't yet. Follow us definitely on YouTube and Facebook. You can find on YouTube, for example, not only our Twitch streams as a sort of a replay. If you ever want to watch something, if you have missed something, then that is your chance to catch up. But also we have, of course, the spotlights. Uh, you can expect uh, the second spotlight to come soon. And yeah. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a beautiful evening. I hope it is not raining where you are. Where I am, it has been raining the whole day and everything is wet, including myself. So now I'm going to dry myself and I'm going to see you next time. <laughs>